Hello guys, you are welcome back to Photographics Academy. Alright, so today we are going to be learning a very interesting topic. How to take your image from a flat image to a very dramatic shot. How to take your image from a flat image to a very dramatic thought shot using props and shadows and all of that. That is what we are learning today. Jump in straight into the video, no much thought, but be very uh know very well that every prop we are using in this video we are giving it out for free all right so let's jump straight into the video i already separated the backgrounds and all of that so we don't have to go through all of that all we need to do now is just to be bringing in our props and be placing them in the right position so the first prop i'm going to be bringing in is my flower verse this one right here so i'm just going to drag it into photoshop place it in a new document like this place it in a new document so let's go and pick up the photoshop file i think i'll be using this one so we'll not have to go through the stress okay so i'll be using this one so we'll not go through the work of selecting subject and all of that so of course you are getting that one for free as well but the same technique applies to all of them so i'm just going to drag this over and place it over my image like this press yes so it's going to ask you that option might pop up in your Photoshop. Just press OK. Now, I do not want it in front. I want it right behind the chair over here. So how do you do that? Simple. Just change the layers. Change the layers. Yeah, like that. So this shows that layer styling is very important. Where you place your layer in your Photoshop is very important. So I'm going to scale this in a little to make it come closer. And maybe take it a bit higher like this. Now, I noticed that it's too much and too bright for my image so i'm going to darken it down a little go to darken it down a little like this and we're going to apply something very important to it so i'm going to go to my uh adjustment layers pick up my black and white change the default to high contrast red filter please do not forget clip it to the underlying layer which is the flower layer and change the blend mode to soft light or multiply i think multiply will work yeah multiply will work then i will reduce the opacity so i need the greens to cross down yeah nice beautiful so i need the greens to cross down so that it doesn't look too much for the image so i think i like it like this one more thing we're going to be doing is to add realistic shadows to it there are many ways you can do that but i want to add just one quickly how do you do that just select your flower where is it yeah here so i will need to group this into one group here yeah, like that then duplicate the group duplicate the group make the group to control j yeah then match this one so match group so it's going to come out as a single sorry not that not that so match the one under yeah let's match this one it's going to come out as a single image so what i'm going to do is press ctrl t right click and go to distort just drag it a little shifting from the original one yes like that or like this let's send the shadows towards the left because the light is falling let's send it towards the right because the light is falling towards the left so the shadows should naturally form towards the right yeah like that you can you can decide to drag it down a little just like this hold on sorry please make sure your auto select is deselected so you don't select the wrong stuff because i need to select my shadow where is it nice okay so this is my shadow over here so i'm going to drag it down a little like this press ctrl l make everything black yeah like that beautiful no darken everything up then blow it out so it looks like a soft light shadow like this beautiful so you can reduce the opacity so we'll have our realistic flower perfectly positioned now the next thing we want to put in this image i think i'll need to crop it out a little so i can gain a little more frame to work with so just drag it up like this and go make sure that you're oh okay so we had we we are working with uh a mix up of a lot of layers so content aware is not going to work right now so we're going to work with what we have then towards the end of the video we are going to add a little more frame to it so that's my bad i would have done that from the beginning but don't worry we still have everything under control so this is before this is after now it's beautiful all right so to watch the video on exactly how we cleaned it, cleaned up the background till it got to this place, go to the link in the description of the video. You are going to see the video that will teach you exactly how we cleaned up the background 
till we got to the point where we started adding props. Nice. Okay, so the next thing I, I want to add to my image is my wall, my wall mannequin. So I'm going to drag this in places over here like that. Yeah. So the same effect, make sure that is inside the group. Make sure it's inside the group and that the object layer is above like that. Beautiful. Okay, so we'll have the wooden mannequin here. I think I'll need to place it somewhere here. Then you need to scale it in. Hold your alternate and scale it in like this. Nice. Okay, so just drag it and place it over the wall like that. Nice. Okay, so press OK. Now we need to start blending it in. I think I like it over here. We need to start blending it in. Of course, you can you can clearly do adjustments. So do, double click, click on Ctrl J rather to duplicate so that it comes out stronger. Then convert the blend mode to multiply. Okay, so we'll have it. Now let's add a very, a very unique shadow. I think I need to match these two group, these two layers, match there, change it to multiply. I think that's too much. So I think I like it like this, just that we do not want the shadows. So what do we do? Duplicate the image, change the blend mode of the underlying layer to blend mode. So we can use it to create our, we can use it to create our shadow. Now you pick up your mask, create a mask for the wooden, wooden tool. Take up your brush tool and start cleaning just the under like this. So you notice that the shadows are appearing just in a very subtle manner. Nice. Just like this. Just clean up. If you do too much, click on X to toggle between your foreground and your background to restore any area that you did clean too much like that. Nice. Just take your time and make it look perfect. Do the same thing over here. Do the same thing over here just a little. So we'll get a perfect shadow like that. Nice. So the idea of the whole stop is to make it look hyper-realistic. It's to make it look hyper-realistic, just like that. Beautiful. I think I like it. Of course, if this is above it, then the lights fall on it shouldn't be equal. The lights fall on it shouldn't be equal. That's why we're having a darker, a darker part of the flowers towards the shadows. Like that. So here should be dark as well. But not entirely dark so we can, uh, can still see so reduce the opacity or the flow and get a bit of that back just like that nice okay so i think we need to do just a little here and we are good to go so let's zoom out look at how realistic that is looking already so i think i painted a little too much here so i'm going to get this back just take your time and make sure you have a very nice selection Okay, so take this down and paint over here. Guys. Okay, we got the shadow here. I need to put a shadow here like this. So just take your time and paint over the whole flower verse just to get a very nice and perfect job. I think I like this one. Two bit of the shadow needs to go. Okay, so. One more here. I think this one needs a little adjustment as well. So just clean up here, this area like that. Yeah, a little. Restore this area a bit too painted like that. So here, so by here, of course, we need to take care of this place. I think I painted a little too much here as well. So we'll get this back and clean the edges up like that see here we need to clean here up okay so you can of course take your time and make sure that your selection is perfect but just understand the concept okay so nice see a little just understand the concept beautiful okay so this is before this is after so see how of course we are grouping these two so we'll have everything properly organized we'll have everything properly organized see how we are already getting a very dramatic image nice okay so one more thing we want to put in this image is a wall frame is a wall frame and to do that just come over the come over the mannequin layer and drag in your frame so this is the frame i want to use 
So I'll just drag it over my image. So I'll drag it and place it in a different document so I can have a selection of the frame because it was not selected. So just click over select subject. It's going to select the frame. Like that. Nice. Okay, so I'll right click, select inverse. So I'm just going to minus the middle. Go to minus the middle or add it up in the selection, anyone. Okay, so we'll have it selected. Now we'll have just our frame. Zoom in to make sure your edges are perfectly selected. Now just create a mask. Just create a mask. There's no need to feather. Press Ctrl I. So we're going to select the inverse of the mask. Drag the mask, the selected frame, and place it over your image. Scale it down like this in such a way that it fits in. So I want it somewhere in the middle or somewhere at the edge. Somewhere at the edge so it complements our for our mannequin our wall mannequin like this we'll just place it over here and press okay so let's start working on it of course it's too bright but we have to let me apply the mask so it doesn't get in the way with what we do we have to darken it down a little like that nice then reduce the saturation make it a little bit darker nice let me change the hue a little yeah like that so the next thing we need to do is to add a realistic shadow to make it look like it's on the wall and to do that, double click over the layer. The blend if is going to open up, come to drop shadow. Make sure it's selected and just move your angle inwards like this a little. Increase your opacity to make it look very strong. Yeah, and press OK and we're good to go. Maybe you can decide to duplicate the, the frame and change the blend mode and change the blend mode to multiply to make it look darker, then reduce the opacity of the first one and we are good to go now you can have an image directly inside the mannequin okay what if we just put an image we can actually do that we can actually do that let's just manipulate that in a minute so i'm just going to duplicate my original image like this press ctrl j yeah then i'm going to scale it down like this so i want to have it somewhere place it above all the layers place it above all the layers please before we scale it down Let's do the placement first. Place it above all the layers. So it's going to replace every other thing here. Here it is. So I want to crop it in just to get the boy's face like this. Just to get the boy's face. So I want to just create a manipulation that is going to hide him just above every other thing. Please, we are making a mistake. We cropped the whole image, not the boy. Okay, so. Let's just find where the boy is and use his own image. Of course, we'll have it selected. So let's just locate him in the whole free in the whole group. I think I have my object somewhere inside these groups. Let's find it. This is a flower group. Okay. So it should be somewhere in this particular one. This is the mannequin group. Okay. So this is our main object here. So I'm going to, I'm going to duplicate our main object. Place him above the frame and I will have him in a different layer. So I, now, I can now crop only him out or cut only him. Let me use my market tool. Cut just the head like this. Layer there cut. So I'm going to have just that part of him. So I can delete this. I do not need this again. So just drag that particular one. Cut it and place it over the, the frame. Then switch the layers and make sure that let's locate our frame where is it okay so make sure that the boy is below is below the frame layer here should be down here nice keep dragging hold on a minute oh mess things up okay so keep dragging him down until the frame is over him like this nice okay so we're now going to scale him in in such a way that he fits into the frame Hold your alternate and scale in like this. Place him inside the frame. Nice. So we are having him right here. Press OK. And make sure he's perfectly fitted. Make sure the shadow is applying over him like that. I think he's running a little. Nice. Let's perfectly fit him in just over here. Just over here. I think I like it. So we're of course going to darken the image down. Yeah, like that. And probably add a little magenta to the saturate to the color so as to make it fit with the 
frame color pixel. Yeah, I think I love this. So let's zoom out and see the overall effect. Okay, so we'll just group everything we've done so far into one group. Okay, so, so this is before, this is after, this is before, this is after, this is before. Just from a flat image, we've been able to build it into a pumping set. One more thing we need to do to pull all these things together is to apply a global color to the whole image. And to do that, let's just use color lookup. And we can just use the original color lookup in Photoshop. We do not actually need to import. So let's just go through the cut this is beautiful. So let me just blend the color in a little so that we can be seeing the effect first hand. So we can try soft light. I don't think I like that. And just be seeing the effect first hand. Okay, so let's start checking the one that will work. Oh, this is nice. This is nice. I think I love this. I'm going to go for this. Of course, you can go through your own color lookups to see the one that looks best for your image. But for this particular image, I think I love what I'm seeing here. One more thing I think I want to do is to add a thickness effect to the image to pull attention to the young man. So to do that, you can basically use any exposure tool in Photoshop to add it. So I'm using levels to do my own. So after just picking it up, use your market to make a selection like this. Make a selection. That is after putting your exposure. Make a selection like this. I do not want it touching the boy. Just make a selection like this. Just make the selection. You know what? Let's just use brush. Pick up a hard brush. Pick up a hard brush. And mask it out. Just click over the image like this. I think this is a bit too small. Click over the image like this. Boom. And the thickness effect is already created. So reduce your brush back. Make it soft. So you don't mistakenly use it. Now, click over the levels and click over the mask. It's going, the property is going to appear there. Feather it out. Feather it out. Use your your move tool and now adjust the edge of the vignette. If you want it circular on the boy like this, you can decide to leave it like this. If you want it at the edge, you can decide to leave it at the edge. But I think I prefer it at the edge, so I'm just going to use it like this. Just drag it in a little. Now it's beautiful. So this is the before and after of the vignette. So this is before, this is after, this is before, this is after. I think I need to reduce the opacity just a little. Nice. So this is before, this is after. Thank you very much for watching this amazing video. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the subscribe on the bell notification button to get notified every single time we drop a new video. Thank you for watching. See you from the next video.